for me and you, the biggest gift is, I've done things wrong in my life in the past. I was speaking about marriage a few days ago when I was in Sri Lanka and I made mention of an important point to say a lot of us when we got married we had functions that were more like you know a Satan's ball really where women are naked men are naked alcohol present people are dancing things are happening and and for you that's your sacred union of mashallah nikah and we're celebrating it and people regret it now 20 years down the line like I said you don't obey Allah don't expect your children to obey you that's one thing quite clear if they do, it's a gift of Allah, but there is a way of leveling it. How? Ask Allah's forgiveness. Oh Allah, 30 years ago, I did it very wrong. Ya Allah, forgive me. If I have another opportunity, inshallah, to do for my children and so on, then by the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I will do it correct. I will try my best to do it correct. MashaAllah. You know, the men, they might think of it differently. See, they're already smiling. Yeah, when I said, when, if we have another opportunity, inshallah, we'll do it correctly. They'll look at the women and say, see, I'll get another wife now. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us, really. It's the way we look at things, the way we understand things. You know, different people look at different things differently. Sometimes you can make a statement that's as straight as ever. And people whose minds are warped cannot see that it's a straight statement. So what can we do? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all and grant us all the ability to understand reality. So this is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have our children. We have things we've done in the past that were wrong. There is a way of coming out of it clean. What is it? Admit you were wrong, regret it, ask Allah's forgiveness and promise not to do it again. Wallahi wiped out, totally wiped out. And guess what? You don't need to go to another human being who's a father or a priest or a sheikh or the imam of the masjid and start confessing your sin. Because who knows that imam might have more sin than you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not let that happen. But he, if he were to tell you, listen, I will give you paradise. He doesn't have a guarantee that he is going into paradise. Where is the guarantee? Subhanallah. People are worried. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu, what a powerful man. He was worried. He thought perhaps I might be one of the hypocrites. How would he have thought that? It's only the strength of Iman that makes you think that way. To say, you know what, I've done so much, but I wonder what will happen to me. This is why we are taught, have hope in the mercy of Allah. Ana inda dhanni abdi bi. The hadith Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, I will treat each one of my worshippers according to how they perceived I would treat them according to their perception of me. You have hope in the mercy of Allah and you've tried the best. Allah in bi'ibn al-wahid al-ahad, by his will and mercy, will have mercy on you. He will treat you the way you felt. But if you feel, no, Allah's not going to forgive me, there's no point, you know, I don't need to seek this forgiveness. Then how do you expect the forgiveness of Allah? Subhanahu wa ta'ala. Another thing, shaitan comes to us in order to tamper with our afterlife by making us think that, you know what, you asked Allah's forgiveness, but you know, that's not good enough. Not good enough. How? You asked Allah's forgiveness, how can you say that's not good enough? You may repeat the seeking of forgiveness again and again. No problem, you can repeat something. Yes, it's good because you are regretful of it. But don't doubt the mercy of Allah, not for a moment, because you would go against the Quran. Listen to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in a verse in Surah Zumar, where Allah, it is known as one of the verses that have the most hope in it. Listen to this beautiful verse. Allah says, قُلْ يَا عِبَادِيَ الَّذِينَ أَسْرَفُوا عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِهِمْ لَا تَقْنَطُوا مِنْ رَحْمَةِ اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يَغْفِرُ الذُّنُوبَ جَمِيعًا إِنَّهُ هُوَ الْغَفُورُ الرَّحِيمُ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa O Messenger, tell my worshippers who have transgressed against themselves. This shows us that when you sin, it's against you, not against Allah. Allah doesn't need my act of worship. It's me who needs it. So remember this. The verse is saying, Oh, you who have transgressed against yourselves, what should you know? Never lose hope in the mercy of Allah. That means if you are losing hope, you are going against Allah. How can you lose hope? Don't think I'm a write off. You are alive, aren't you? Well, then ask Allah's forgiveness. You are breathing, aren't you? You are. Well, ask Allah's forgiveness because the very next verse Allah says, وَأَنِيبُوا إِلَىٰ رَبِّكُمْ وَأَسْلِمُوا لَهُ مِن قَبْلِ أَن يَأْتِيَكُمُ الْعَذَابِ Turn to Allah, repent, surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala quickly before the punishment overtakes you. One, there are two verses, one of them says, before the punishment overtakes you suddenly and you didn't even realize. Subhanallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala